Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm New York City Council Member Oswald Feliz, and I want to start by thanking each and every one of you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Today marks one year since the devastating, unspeakable Twin Parks tragedy. All of us are still heartbroken. We're still torn. So I want to start today with a prayer. Uh, I'll pass it on to our uh, Imam Musa Kaba. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbana, Rabbana, Atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi l-akhirati hasana. Rabbana, Atina fi dunya hasana. وفي الآخرة حسنة وغنى عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Imam. One year ago, we saw a devastating, indescribable, horrible Twin Parks tragedy that took the lives of 17 neighbors, including babies. A horrible tragedy, one of the worst tragedies in the history of the Bronx. And I want to start by thanking everyone who every single day has been here supporting this community every way possible. I want to start by thanking our local fire department. That day, we saw them running towards danger, towards a burning building, putting their lives at risk to save the lives of people they had never met and we're so thankful for them. I also want to thank the Gambian Youth Organization, who has been working around the clock, on the ground, connecting these affected families to all the resources that they need to recover and heal. I want to thank many different organizations, including Bronx Works, the American Red Cross. I especially want to thank our local school right across the street, right next to the building, MS391 and TAPCO, for opening their doors that day and showing that they care. We need to make sure that another similar tragedy never, ever happens again. Not in the Bronx, not anywhere in the city of New York. And this is why we've been able to work with colleagues in city, state, and federal government to strengthen our housing laws and make sure that our buildings are safe for our families including strengthening laws on the issue of self-closing doors to make sure that landlords are taking those laws seriously. Our community is still in shock. All of us are still in pain. You could see it. You could feel it. But I want to say one thing, one promise, which is that we are going to continue to be every single step of the way supporting each and every single affected victim every way possible. We're going to remember those 17 innocent people that lost their lives in this tragic fire. And we're going to remember the families who suffered more than we could ever imagine. And we're going to be with them every single step of the way as they heal, as they recover, and as they rebuild. So I want to thank all of you for joining. Later today, we're going to unveil, unveil the street, uh, the street code naming, uh, in, to honor the life and the legacy and the work of Abdullah Touré, who was the first Gambian to move into Twin Parks. But before that, uh, let's hear from a few of our local leaders, starting with our very own Bronx Borough President, Vanessa Gibson. Assalamu alaikum. 
my brothers, my sisters, today we gather to reflect, to remember, to honor, standing in unison, the lives of our 17 neighbors who were husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, siblings, children that are fallen. We recognize this day one year later. January 9th, 2022, a day that we will forever remember, a dark day in the history of our community, of our borough, of our city, and our state. One year later, we gather together to reflect on those lives that we have lost, to celebrate their lives the way they lived and not the tragic way that they died. We recognize the residents of 333 Twin Parks Northwest. Responders, 200 plus firefighters that ran into a raging fire to save lives. Members of the NYPD, Patrol Borough Bronx, the 46 Precinct, Office of Emergency Management, the American Red Cross, organizations on the ground from day one, GYL, Bronx Works, Muslim Community Network, so many others, ICNA Relief, leaders of all faiths, Imam Kaaba, so many of our Jewish leaders and Christian leaders that came together to shower these families and these neighbors with love, with comfort, with strength, with love and with prayers. My faith tells me that there is nothing impossible when you trust in God, when you stand on his word, when you know that Allah is using us in a mighty way. Allah has sustained us over this year, these 365 days, days of pain, of frustration, of heartache, but somehow as a city and as a borough, we have found purpose from our pain. We have found strength within the storm. We may be damaged, but we are not destroyed. We may be bruised, we are not broken. We are a stronger community. We have learned and the deaths of our loved ones will not be in vain. From that day, a year ago, as I began this administration as your Bronx Borough President, I never knew January would have such significance, such meaning in a good way and a bad way. It has caused us to reaffirm our faith. It has caused us to reaffirm our commitment to our community, faith, fellowship, family, and community. The 17 neighbors that we have lost, our beloved family members, will live on in our hearts. We are a forever changed borough, but we are also a united borough, because if the people stand together, we will never be divided. Today marks one year, but I m remind everyone that in the days and the weeks and the months that continue after January 9th, we cannot lose sight of what is important. We cannot leave our families in the darkness. We have to continue to shower them with love and comfort and strength. We have been through so much as a city my heart continues to mourn the loss of those that we have lost. My heart breaks for these families. They are forever changed. But what I truly hope in this year is that they have found solace and comfort in knowing that a community has stepped up in a major way. Because the residents and families of 333 181st Street are our family. Amen. And we have never left them alone in these 365 days, and we will not leave them alone after today. And so while today is a day of remembrance, a day of reflection, a day of a celebration of life, let us be reminded that life is so precious. Hug your loved ones every day. Tell them you love them. Let us continue to mourn this loss, but let us also continue to reaffirm and affirm our love and our commitment to our people 
to our African people, to our Caribbean people, our African American and Latino people, God's people, all people of all faiths and all backgrounds. As your Bronx Borough President, I am here to remind you that I will always be here. I was here before January 9th, and I will be here after January 9th. I don't need the recognition of thanks and gratitude because we are doing what we are called to do. We are called to do this work. And to the men and women of the FDNY and the NYPD and all of our first responders, let's not forget the hospital workers, the nurses and doctors that responded. We have all been traumatized, but every day we get better. Every day we get stronger. And today we recognize our brother, the first Gambian American that moved here into Twin Parks, our brother, Abdurri Touré. We honor him. We celebrate this life. We celebrate the lives that we've lost. May Allah be with all of our families and provide all of you with abundant peace and abundant love and abundant strength. Thank you to the families and to the residents of 333 for allowing us to embrace you, to love on you, to hug you, to mourn with you, to reflect with you and remember with you. I pray that we take hold of this moment and we never lose sight. Because a lot of times when the cameras leave and people feel lonely, they feel forgotten. Let us remind the residents of 333 whether they have relocated or they remain here, that they are not forgotten. May God bless all of us and allow us to continue to do this work. And in honor of all of those we lost, may we honor their memories, reflect on their lives, celebrate who they are, and honor our families. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and my sisters. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bronx Borough President. And these last 12 months have not been easy. And we're so thankful and grateful for all the work that you've done around the clock. And now I want to introduce another person that has been working around the clock, uh, Salim Jarmain from the Gambian Youth Organization. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa My name is Salim Jarmain. I'm the president of the Gambian Youth Organization. Um, I want to thank uh, everyone for gathering today from our elected officials, um, GYO partners, and uh, family and friends of 333. I also want to thank uh, those who are outside of the, the borders of our country um, for all their support because surely like this tragedy really impacted so many people around the globe. Um, I want to thank CM Feliz um, for his partnership and his leadership um, during these times as well. Again, I'm going to thank 333 uh, family members again for their resilience and patience. Um, I want to thank all the family members of the deceased for their resilience and patience because you know, we know truly losing a loved one, you know, it's not easy. Definitely not easy. Um, but as people of faith, you know, we believe that God tests those he loves the most. Um, may we all be amongst the people that God loves the most. Um, I'm not going to take uh, much of your time, uh, but I would like to mention what I mentioned before last year, um, that the fire at this building, again, did not need to happen. As I've mentioned, you know, before, we live in the in the world and with the most brilliant minds there's no way a fire like this should have, to have taken so many lives. This is all because of a system that has been set up to fail people in underserved areas. Yeah. So yes, we know progress is being made. Bills have been pro uh, pro um, proposed and passed actually, but we need a more collective effort from all city, state, and federal counterparts to come together and commit to a plan so that, so that this tragedy like this never happens again. Uh, we also need to ensure that those who need to be held accountable for their negligence, right, um, are held accountable so that this um, never happens again. And at the end of the day, the best way we can remember the deceased is to make sure, again, we put in place measures that, you know, will ensure lives are not lost again in this manner. All right, that's, that's all I have for y'all guys. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now let's hear from our New York City public advocate, Jumani Williams. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessing, love and light to everyone. Thank you uh, to our council member uh, for doing this today and our borough president and the families and 333 and all of my colleagues who are here. Um, I'm so happy that we're here today behind this. We'll be honoring Abdullah Tilray, 
uh, the first Gambian who was here, very often uh, the black African immigrant story is not told, is not held up in the same ways uh, as other immigrant stories. And it's really important that we lift that up so when people walk by, uh, they can understand the story of the Gambian immigrants who were here. It's also important because I believe it is a cross-section of so many things why we're here today. I remember one year ago, all of us here in the freezing cold, seeing people with shock on their faces, uh, some who had lost multiple family members in a fire that didn't have to happen, the worst fire in decades. The past three or four of the worst fires have happened right here in the Bronx. Uh, I don't believe that to be an accident. Uh, I just want to say some of the words that I said today during the memorial. There was one of the relatives who had a poem written, uh, and uh, some of the lines, I believe it was entitled, We Were Just Trying to Breathe. One of the lines was, Because Our Bodies Aren't Worth Investments. And another line was, How many times do we have to die before we're allowed to breathe? <laughs> it is important to bring this up, because while I'm uh, happy to be here to celebrate life, I'm sad that we have to celebrate it in this way because we lost people from preventable tragedy, tragedies. And these kind of tragedies happen in black, brown, immigrant, working communities. It has to be said over and over again. And while we stand in the ashes to rise, to continue to abuse the resiliencies of these communities is immoral. We have to make sure, and I'm happy as well, that there have been some changes federally, some changes locally, but not enough. This was due to lack of proper, affordable housing. Until we take away the profit that people make by providing unacceptable housing, trying to deal with a housing crisis, this will continue to happen. We have to take away the profit that people have and make by not providing the heat that people need. And I'm going to say there are some people that should not own property in this city. And there are some people who should be held criminally liable for the things that are going on in black, brown, immigrant communities as they try to find housing that they simply cannot afford and have to deal with things that human beings shouldn't have to deal with. It. And until we get that right, I fear that we'll be here again. So my hope is that when we gather here, all of us as leaders and communities, inshallah, we can say we actually did something to prevent these tragedies from happening again. But today, I want to stand with the families to remember the life of 17 people. The numbers and the ages are terrible to think about. And we must lift them up, and we must lift up Abdullah Teray so people will remember them and their lives are not taken in vain. Peace and blessings. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Thank you so much, Public Advocate. And I also want to acknowledge our wonderful District Attorney, Darcel Clark, wonderful partner who's also been working every single day. And now I would like to introduce our New York State Attorney General, Letitia James. Thank you, Council Member. I want to thank all of my colleagues who are here today. And what I want to most, um, when I keep in my, when I keep in my thoughts and in my prayers, all of the family members who lost loved ones. What I remember most um, is the anger, the anger of individuals who were here a year ago, the anger of individuals who say, why did this have to happen? Why did we have so many fires in the Bronx? And the anger was the language of those in the streets, those of the streets who feel like they have continued to be ignored and who have historically been ignored. I remember the 17 caskets that lay before the nation, one after one after one. I remember all of those who cried, but what I remember most is the resiliency and the spirit of the Gambian community and the community at large who came together to love one another, to hug one another, to feed each other, to pray, and to know that those who have died will live on, and that they will always live on in the hearts and minds of those who love them. Whenever you have memories of your loved ones, they never die. And the reality is, is that the Muslim faith, the Christian faith, the Jewish faith, we believe that we will see these individuals again. 
and now that they are in the arms of Allah. And so I've come here today, one, to let this community know that we are standing here as elected officials to ensure that this never happens again and to ensure that communities like this, immigrant communities like this, immigrants who built this country, a country of immigrants, will never be ignored. And that all of us have a responsibility and a duty to ensure uh, that affordable housing, that the conditions of affordable housing are proper, that they're maintained, and that they're consistent with codes. And so I've just come here to say, to praise all of those who obviously ran into the fire, particularly the first responders, members of FDNY and NYPD, when everyone ran out, yeah. they ran in. When everyone ran out, they ran in, sacrificing their own personal safety for the benefit of all of us. And we should give them a round of applause. Amen. I want to thank them. And I want to thank them for being here today and for joining hand in hand with this community, arm in arm with no space between us, recognizing that they too are part of our community and that they too on that day cried and they too felt the tragedy. So I know that there will be a co-naming shortly, but I just want everyone to know that this Attorney General, an Attorney General who understands and recognizes the tragedy and the pain of this community, will be with you now and always. And my thoughts and my prayers are with you. And I hope that we will never, ever meet under these circumstances again. Bless you. Thank you so much, Attorney General. And now let's hear from a family representative, Haji Dukare. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, on behalf of the victim's family and members of the Gambian community, I want to thank the councilman and all elected officials. We're here today to honor the 17 victims. But there's one person that's very special to the Gambian community. In the Gambian community, when you say the Toure building, they know you're referring to 333. That's the short name for it. In the spring of 1988, I walked through those doors with $100 in my pocket. I came to see Ablai Toure, because someone told me he's the only Gambian that lives around here. That's over 30 years ago. From the day I walked in, I said hello to him. He asked me my last name. I told him my last name. He said, your father is my uncle. You are my cousin and this is your home. And I have to tell you, the apartment was full of people. But his family, his entire family were so welcoming. It's amazing. And they were so happy to receive us. Countless number of Gambians. And some of us that are old enough to be around here in 1988, we know what this community was like. There was hardly any supermarket. The healthiest food I could find was banana from a bodega. I mean, there was no cable TV here. We had two, 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 one, two area code. But we saw how with the help of our light to with his vision, how this community was built, especially by immigrants. He told us to go to school. I, he personally encouraged me to go to school, to get an education. He said to me, America is your home. Open a bank account, buy a house. And more importantly, let's build a community center. Let's build a masjid. Let's teach our children our culture. So I'm so ever grateful and so thankful personally for my blight to Ray. And I'm really glad and thrilled that we're honoring him today. And I'm thankful for his family for sharing him with the entire Gambia and the immigrant um, community. FDNY, I can't thank you enough for your work and your sacrifices. Our elected officials, I mean, they've been with us, some of them even way before this tragedy. Vanessa Gibson, I call her our sister. She's always been with this community before she became borough president. And I know she's always gonna be here, all right? And we still continue to challenge our elected officials to pass legislations. I mean, this should never happen in our communities. This happens way too much in our communities. And we can't say it enough. 
every winter it's best here there's Christmas trees yeah I mean it's always in our neighborhood I mean nothing against the Upper East Side but we don't hear about that mm. there mm. all right but with that said um, I just wanted to thank everyone uh, for this day and this moment and salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you thank you so much thank you and now we'll hear from another uh, family representative F Fatu Wage Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm joined here with Ms. Philip, and I intentionally wanted to bring her here because I think her presence deserves great mention, and she's also an unsung hero of this community. Um, alongside Kisma Balai Tour, she was also the tenant association leader of this building, helped develop this um, neighborhood and help um, this place become home for many of us. So I just wanted to like acknowledge her Thank here and bring so her much. over. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And before I go to my remarks, I'm also thinking very much today of my four cousins, all American citizens who lost their mom and dad, um, Uncle Haji Jawada and Auntie um, Situ Jabi, and are still back home in the Gambia and have been unable to come because their grandma, um, who's their primary guardian, was denied visa to be able to come. Mm -hmm. So I hope you all can keep them in your thoughts and prayers today. We all grew up knowing building 333 as Ture Kunda, translated in Soninke to Ture Home. It was here that our parents, the first wave of African immigrants in the Bronx in the 1980s and 1990s, marked their foundation in their new home in search for opportunities, receiving endearing welcome from our African American and Latinx neighbors. It was here that first generation West African Americans will hear their names and the, will first hear their names and verses of, of the Quran whispered in their ears. It was here where our elders found a part of our ancestral home, a part of the Smiling Coast with them. Where the first generation saw Kisma Abdullahi Ture as grandfather because migration will keep us oceans away from our own grandparents. We all found home in Ture Kunda. It was our sanctuary of comfort, affection, community, and faith. Kisma Abdullahi Ture was our grandfather and our father. In Soninkara, we say Sumpurakati, meaning blood and milk, translating to we are all family. 333 represented Sumpurakati for West Africans in the Bronx. Today, we memorialize our memories and stories as black immigrants in a city and borough we have found home with. We honor the lives of our 17 beautiful souls who have helped define immigrant New York and their legacies of tenacity, community service, courage, and perseverance that they left behind. Today, we celebrate the wave of first-generation West Africans, both present and future, who have gone off to the world equipped with the tools and values that this very community has installed in them. May Allah grant Jannah to our deceased loved ones. May Allah bless and honor the Toure family for the place that they have held in our community. May the story of Kisma Abdullahi Toure stay alive in our hearts and minds, consistently reminding all of us to leave behind memories and stories that surpass our physical existence on this earth. Thank you all so much. God bless. Thank you. God bless. God bless. bless. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I speaking on behalf of my siblings, my mothers, my cousins, the entire community of 333. I grew up here. Um, and growing up in Turekunda was an adventure. <laughs> and just to give a little backstory of how my um, parents came here, my father came here in the late 70s, around 1977, 78. And my mom followed suit in 79. And a few months after that, I was born in 1980. So he used to call me his American baby because I was the first one born here. I am the seventh of 14 children. Two are deceased. There remains 12 of us. Um, I also have my mother, my mothers. I have three mothers. Um, my father left behind three wives. Um, one has since relocated to the Gambia. Her name is Galiman Jai. My mom, Fatu Jane, and Mahore, we call her Mahore, which means big mother, Maria Masinera. And I'm just gonna name my siblings in order of oldest to youngest. We have our eldest, Suleiman Toure, followed by Basiru Toure, followed by Mohamed Toure, followed by Alai Mari Toure, who resides in the Gambia, followed by um, Abdullai Toure, followed by my sister, first girl, 
John A. Ture, <laughs> followed by myself, Magundo Ture. I am followed by my younger brother, Abdul Wahab Ture, who passed away in 1996. Followed by Fatia Ture, who is my younger sister who lives in Abu Dhabi. Followed by Yasin Ture, who resides in Atlanta, Georgia. Followed by Rokia Ture, second to last baby. And the babies, Django and John Polo, who are twins. Um, and um, my father is survived by 20 grandchildren. Um, and we are humbled, honored, appreciative, and blessed that this honor was bestowed upon my father. And not discounting the trials and tri tribulations and the suffering of the 17 people who lost their lives dur during this tragic tragedy. My father was selfless. He gave what he had, and he always instilled in us that giving to charity does not make you poorer. He instilled the value of, of us being Muslims. He taught us our deen, which means religion. He taught us our culture. We spoke only Soninke in the house. We all speak Soninke fluently. But as I speak here, you wouldn't think I spoke another language, would you, right? I understand my culture. And I respect the decisions that my parents made for us because that's what they knew. A lot of it was difficult. A lot of it was strange because you have your culture at home and then you come out into the world. You have your school life, your neighbor, neighbors, but we made it our own. We are all productive members of society and we, are, we all take care of ourselves. But that piece of giving, you don't give because you have. You be give because your brother is in need. If you see someone that needs help, you help them. This is the value that my father instilled in all of us. Not forgetting this community. The reason why we grew up the way we did and he opened our doors is there weren't many resources available to people. That pathway to citizenship. My father was a Reagan Republican. He was a Reagan Republican. But when he got his citizenship, it was on my, I, was, I had just turned 18 and we went to vote to be, together and I made him vote Democrat. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but he was a Reagan Republican because that pathway to citizen, citizenship was given during that administration. So as I speak here, just to live, for, for my father's legacy to live on, how do we encourage our leaders to continue to make that pathway to citizenship easy? Um, and thinking of all the resources that were bestowed upon me, after school programs, etiquette classes, all of these are resources that are very few and far between. And I see a lot of kids on the streets and they don't have those after school resources that we've had. I don't see those anymore. And we need that in this community just to keep it going. We need to keep the kids busy. There are too many idle hands in this community. Um, also, like we all went to IS-137. It was called at that time, now it's MS-391. We all went to PS9. And then I remember all the community advocates. Miss Luella Hatch up the block was a great friend of my father. She was a part of our family. She was in our house all the time. They always came together and brought the trucks of food for those who were less fortunate. How do we keep these programs going in this, this community is still in need? Not forgetting all of the laws and legislation that needs to happen for buildings like this. This was affordable. This is home. How can we make it even a better home? Right, And also, like even the 46 precinct, they were a resource for us. Growing up, remember, there were people who would get lost on the train and they didn't speak English, and a random police officer would knock on the door with, hey, Mr. Touré, can you help us <laughs> find help this person get home? This was our lives. Not forgetting all of the, you know, family, like we're tied by milk. What, did that, what was that um, quote that you said, Fatmata? Sumpudo um, Hati. Blood and milk. Mm -hmm. I mean, blood doesn't make you family. We are a community. Mm -hmm. And the Toure family is humble, humbled, grateful, and honored that, you know, they chose to name the street after my father along with the 17 victims of this fire. All of the neighbors in the building, and I'm going to name some names, Mrs. Holmes on the 18th floor, um, I, uh, Jonathan's mother, Miss... Jonathan's mother. We remember Jonathan. <laughs> sorry. Miss Williams. Miss Williams. I'm sorry, Miss Williams. I always used to call you Jonathan's mother. Um, and huh? And Miss Phyllis. Also, Anthony. In my father's last years, Anthony. Where's Anthony? We named him Tony Toure. He used to come and help us. You know, my father. You know, had a stroke and was. You know. You know very sick during his last days, and Tony would come and help us get him in the bed. 
We were a community. Our doors were always open. And for that, I thank everyone and I love every th everyone. And may we continue to be a community and continue to grow and just continue to develop the resources needed just to make everyone productive and continue to just live just to live a great life. Thank you. And also Shaniqua. Shaniqua also was our neighbor. Um, she passed away after the fire. She was a great neighbor. She was always there when my parents needed something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. So that... So again, just want to thank the entire community. These last 12 months have not been easy for any one of us and especially for the people of Twin Parks. And we're just so, so thankful for everything that all of you have done, including just staying united and working together to help all the affected. That program, we're gonna move forward and unveil our brand new street sign. All right. sure, sure. I'm sorry, I'm too tall.